Hi class, we spent section 2.1 reviewing exponential and logarithmic functions and the algebraic properties of those functions. And now that we've had that review, we're now getting into the calculus of them. What are derivatives of exponential functions? We're going to differentiate exponential base e functions, and then we're going to solve applied problems using those derivatives. One of the nicest things about the exponential function is that the derivative of the function is e to the x itself. That is, if you have a function e to the x, and you take the derivative of e to the x, you still get e to the x. Easy, right? Let's try it. For our first video example, it says to find the derivative with respect to x. So let's go ahead and find dy dx. And when we apply that to this side, remember that the derivative of a constant, when it's multiplied in front of a function, that constant can come out, and then we just take the derivative of the function inside. And we know that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so you end up with 6 times e to the x. So that's our first derivative. Notice how it's exactly the same as our first function. In order to do the second function, we want to acknowledge the fact that this is written as a product. So let's recall the product rule. If I have a function that is the result of two functions being multiplied, then the derivative is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Let's do this problem. dy dx is going to be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Let's simplify this. You would get x cubed, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and then we would have e to the x times the derivative of x cubed. And then we want to simplify this. Notice how they both have an e to the x in common, and they both have x squared in common. Let's simplify that. They have an x squared in common, and an e to the x in common. And when I take this divided by the x squared e to the x, I have an x left over. And I may take this term divided by x squared e to the x, I have a 3. And that's our derivative. For part C of example 1, let's acknowledge the fact that we're taking the derivative of a quotient. Notice that it has division or fractions in there. And so let's write our rule. That's f over g. If I have a function that's composed of division, then when we take the derivative, it's going to be g times f prime minus f times g prime the whole thing over g squared. Okay, so let's try that with this one. dy dx is going to be the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, and then we're going to subtract the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, the whole thing over the denominator squared. Let's see if we can rewrite this. x squared, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, minus e to the x, the derivative of x squared is 2x. That's over x to the fourth. Let's simplify this. They have an x and an e to the x in common in the numerator. x squared e to the x divided by x e to the x leaves me with x. 2x e to the x divided by x e to the x leaves me with 2. All over x to the fourth. And I can simplify this. I have an x to the power of 1 and an x to the fourth in the denominator. So I can reduce that. We'll have e to the x times x minus 2 over x cubed. So there's our derivative. 
This next theorem is just formalizing the idea of the derivative of e to the x combined with a chain rule. So instead of x, if we have a function as our exponent, then after you write the derivative, then you have to take the derivative of the exponent itself. Let's see what this looks like. Video example 3 asks us to differentiate each, each of the following with respect to x. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to x. That is, we're going to take the derivative of e to the x, which should be e to the x, or e to the power of whatever it is. And then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of the negative 4x. What's the derivative of negative 4x? Well, that's just negative 4. So we would pull that out to the front and get negative 4 e to the negative 4x. Let's try that again with the second example. So to take the derivative with respect to x, we're going to write e to the power of everything that's there. And then we're going to multiply it by the derivative of that power. Make sure you use parentheses to keep that whole phrase together. And I'm going to take that derivative and pull it out to the front. We get 3x squared plus 8 times e to the power of x cubed plus 8x. Notice that the e to the power never changed the whole way through. It's e to that power, and that power does not change while it's in that power. It changes when we find the derivative of it. And so that's where that came from. But that power will always be x cubed plus 8x. For example c, we have e to the power of the square root of x squared plus 5. So that's e to the power of a radical, and then inside the radical, we have another function. Let's just write it once, or rewrite it once. That's e to the power of x squared plus 5, the whole thing to the 1 half power. See how it's power to the power? Um, so we're going to do the chain rule a couple of times. As we differentiate, dy dx is going to be e to that power. The derivative of that power will be 1 half x squared plus 5 to the negative 1 half power. And then taking the derivative of that inside will give us 2x plus 0. So once again, we have our original function e to the power of something. We have the derivative of that power of something as the chain rule. And then we have the chain rule again to be the derivative of the inside of that. Let's just rewrite that one time. I'm going to pull my coefficient to the front, 2x. That's going to be e to the power of that radical. And then this part with a negative exponent will go in the denominator as well as the 2. And when we see that, we should see that this will cancel out. So we have x e to the power of the radical x squared plus 5 all over radical x squared plus 5. For video example 4, it's asking us to find the second derivative. So first we have to find the first derivative. That's dy dx. And we're going to take e to the power, is e to the 1 over x squared. And then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of that. So the derivative of x to the negative 2. And that would be e to the power of 1 over x squared times negative 2 x to the power of negative 3. I could rewrite this, but it really wouldn't help us as we were going towards the second derivative. 
So let's go ahead and see the second derivative of y is, we're going to have to do the product rule. Writing the product rule up there for our benefit, we're going to get the first term. So that's e to the power of 1 over x squared. And then the derivative of this one would be negative 2 times negative 3 x to the negative 4. And then we say plus negative 2 x to the negative 3. And then de finding the derivative of this would be e to the 1 over x squared. And then we have to chain rule that. And then once again, come up with negative 2 x to the negative 3. Let's simplify this. That's e to the 1 over x squared times 6x to the negative 4. And then we can multiply the parts that can multiply. We'll get positive 4x to the negative 6 times e to the 1 over x squared. Let's just rewrite it. 6e to the 1 over x squared over x to the fourth plus 4 e to the 1 over x squared over x to the sixth. So this is our derivative here. For video example 5, we have the growth of a business account. Rachel is depositing 20000 in a savings account that earns 4% annual interest, compounded continuously. The value of her account after t years is given by this exponential function here. Now ask us to find a of 10. So how much will her account be in 10 years? And so let's go ahead and use our calculator for that. And I get $29,836.49. It was 0.493. So I leave it at 49 cents. And so after 10 years, the account should be worth $29,836.49. Now, it says to find a prime of 10. So we're going to first find the derivative. And we have a constant. And then we have e to the power. And then we have to take the derivative of that power as a chain rule. So the derivative of 0.04t is 0.04. Let's simplify that. And my calculator tells me that that's 800 e to the 0.04t. So if I want to take a prime of 10, once again, let's use our calculator. I get a value of $1,193. It says 0.459, so I'm going to round it up to 46 cents. Now, what is this value? The first value was the amount in the count in 10 years. But what is this a prime of 10? Well, that's how fast that's changing, meaning that around year 10, it's increasing at $1,193.46 per year. Okay, so once again, the value in the count at 10 years is $29,836.49, but the rate at which the account is changing in 10 years is $1,193 per year. Okay, thank you. That's the whole section.